Hey everyone, we're going to talk about arteries of the shoulder, neck, head, and brain today. Uh, we're going to start with the shoulders and the neck. So let's begin by just kind of understanding what we're looking at right here. This is just a person that's standing like this. And those green lines are uh, the neck and then the shoulder. You can tell based off of the color. I know the color sucks, but um, yeah, you'll figure it out. Okay, so um, here, this may look familiar. This is the aorta. Uh, in previous videos of mine, I know I mentioned that there's two uh, portions of it. Uh, well now we're adding a third one. We're talking uh, inclusive to the ascending aorta and the arch of the aorta. There is the thoracic aorta, or also known as the descending aorta. So let's start on the left side and work our way right. We have the left subclavian artery. That is the artery that lies just beneath the clavicle. Um, it's not too interesting right here, but it breaks, branches off, and provides oxygenated blood to the uh, the left arm. Here, this guy right here is going to be making its way up to the uh, the midbrain. Actually, that is the vertebral artery, and that's going to make uh, a small portion of the circle of Lewis, which we'll talk about in a, in a little bit from now. So, vertebral artery coming off of the left subclavian artery. Okay, so that is this guy. Now let's go to the middle here. This is the left common carotid artery. Okay, left common carotid artery is going to come up and it's going to branch or it's going to fork in the two different portions, the uh, the internal and the external portions. It's a little bit backwards. You have your internal, which is more lateral at this point, and then the external, which is more uh, which is more medial. I forgot a little line right here. That, no. Kind of hard to see, but that looks better. Okay, so uh, internal, external. Now the internal is going to branch outward and then make its way back in, and that's also going to provide a portion of the circle of Willis as well. It's, it's going to actually send blood to it. Um, the, uh, the external common carotid is going to provide a lot of the blood to the, uh, the arteries that we'll talk about just after we get through this stuff here. It's also going to give rise to this superior thyroid artery, which we talked about the veins uh, in a previous video. It's going to provide oxygen and aid blood to the thyroid gland. Okay, so common carotid, left common carotid, and this is the left subclavian artery. This guy right here is the brachiocephalic artery. There is only one brachiocephalic artery. Uh, in contrast to the left and right brachiocephalic veins, um, here, the, the, this is this is one of the reasons why the arteries aren't symmetrical, unlike the veins. Here, so brachiocephalic artery, there are no left and right associated with it. That's going to branch off into the right subclavian artery and then the right common carotid artery. So with the right common carotid artery, that's branching off of the brachiocephalic, is going to come up and also uh, divide into two internal and external portions just like it did on the left side. So internal, more lateral, external, more medial at this point. And then you also have your, your, your superior thyroid artery there as well. And uh, again here, uh, just as with the other side, we have our right subclavian artery. Uh, hopefully you can see that. And that's going to come up with the vertebral artery, uh, the right vertebral artery as well branching right off of that subclavian. Okay, so we'll, we'll run through that really quick here. Okay, aorta. Ascending aorta, arch of the aorta, descending aorta. Left subclavian artery, left vertebral artery. Left common carotid artery, and the uh, internal and external portions, internal, external, superior thyroid artery, and then on the right side, we have the brachiocephalic artery, right common carotid artery, which are the internal and the external portions, and then again, the, uh, the, the, the right portion of the superior thyroid artery, and the right sub, uh, subclavian artery, and then the right vertebular, ver, vertebular artery. I'm going to hard to say when you start too fast. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about where all this stuff goes to towards the head. We're going to talk about oxygenated blood going towards the head now.